Hello, I am Mary Sue Sweeney Price, director of the Newark Museum. Thank you for visiting us during our centennial year. Unbounded is how the Newark Museum actually sees its centennial. Not really by looking back over the last hundred years, although we're incredibly proud of our many accomplishments, but really by looking forward, looking at what artists are doing today, how artists and museums together are going to shape the, the dialogues of the future, how all of the contemporary issues that we face are really encapsulated by these artists and presented to the world. For me, this exhibition is unbounded by geography. It's unbounded by geography. It's unbounded by genre. Un unbounded by traditional notions of art medium. Classic museum categorization and standardization. Nationality. In some ways, this exhibition is unbounded by history. By material, it's unbounded by nationality. It's unbounded by nation states. It's unbounded by... Function versus non-function. Media, it's unbounded by artistic intent. Traditional concepts of what is usually organizing an exhibition of any kind. Decoration versus... Culture unbounded by time. Unbounded by the arbitrary division of fine art from the minor arts. I'm Beth Venn, Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art and Senior Curator of the Department I'm Ulysses of Dietz. I'm the Decorative Arts Curator and the Senior Curator at the Newark Museum in New Jersey. I'm Catherine Ann Paul, Curator of the Arts of Asia here at the Newark Museum in New York. Uh, my name is Krista Clark. I'm Curator of Arts of Africa and Senior Curator of Arts of Africa and the Americas at the Newark Museum. Well, the exhibit is Unbounded, New Art for a New Century, which is our inaugural exhibition for our centennial year sort of celebrating a hundred years of collecting what's new. And it looks at contemporary art, primarily works created over the past 15 years or so. And brings them together in a thematic display that makes unexpected connections. And it focuses on art from four different collecting regions, Africa, Asia, the Americas, and decorative arts, um, from art that was created and collected within the last 15 years here at the Newark Museum. And it links those works up thematically in a way that helps us better understand the kind of conversations that are going on cross-culturally among artists today. We thought it would make a great exhibition to work together across departments and bring these acquisitions together and look at a 21st century take on our founders' ideas of representing the work of living artists. But in today's world, we all have different lenses that we bring to the subject matter. And when we bring these works together, you know, where are the commonalities that we can find? We got the idea for this exhibit really because as we were acquiring new objects and listening to each other's presentations to the trustees, we realized that there were ideas that connected completely disparate things. And we began to talk about that. And as we decided that part of the centennial needed to follow up on our founding mission to collect the art of today, that we needed to do something together to look at what the art of today is to us today. The first section of the exhibition is called Mixed Messages, and it really has to do with artists who are using the idea of language and symbols, the visual power of language is a theme. That um, the second section of the exhibition is Revisiting History, and that really has to do with artists who are looking back at perhaps their own personal history, a certain shared cultural history, drawing on that history to create new works today. And the final most holistic theme is the human condition. And we tried to have it be a very broad term because it encompasses both the individual human condition of one person's life and one person's story and how each individual story also interconnects with a range of people that each person belongs to a different group, whether it's a diaspora group or whether it's a refugee group or whether... African potters working in England but studying Native American There are so pottery. many ways had... in which a work from my collection relates to a work in, made by an American artist or by an artist from Tibet. All of them come from a particular personal history that relates to a cultural history and that relates to a cycle of life and death and how, what they experience in that cycle of life and death. I think what holds the exhibit together because it really, I mean, it, it, it's extraordinary the amount of media, you know, for instance, that we have included here from traditional sculpture to works of video and new media and textiles and jewelry and ceramics and traditional paintings. And there's so much that's going on here. But I think what holds it together is that these are all examples of 
contemporary thought, contemporary artistic investigation. Um, each one of them does that in its own way, but when it comes right down to it, these are all of these works are about artists trying to make sense of the world in some way. And it seems it seems very obvious, but just the trials of life, the the issues of surviving a life, getting on with life, transitions of life, were all things that keep appearing again and again in art all over the world, which, if you think about it, is no surprise. But often contemporary art in one medium doesn't deal with that kind of issue. So we purposely began to, we all seem to be interested in artifacts that express that kind of story. Most Americans, even if you're mostly Native American, you have yourself a personal history that is not located in one single geographic space, and that many, many Americans think not only of their Americanness, but of what their roots were before their ancestors came to the U.S., or the ones who were here, what their roots are as they intermarried with people who had come to the North America. I think it's, you know, the works to me become richer through kind of collab this collaborative experience because it's hard to pick a single thread to come out of this exhibition. People should gravitate to the things that speak to them and to try to think about what attracts you to the pieces that you like best. I think that it's a mistake for visitors in an exhibition to be overly instructed as to how to experience the exhibition and look at things next to each other because that's the other thing that this or any exhibition but this particular exhibition does so differently from most exhibitions of contemporary art is that it provides dialogues between pieces of the similar time period but vastly different worldviews. We've managed to gather a group of stuff together that is so completely unbounded by any of those strictures almost by accident, not completely. We don't collect randomly, but the fact is we didn't set out to put together a show like this. This was what we had collected, and it ended up being perfect for a show like this. We thank the many contributors and funders who have made today's exhibition possible. We also hope that you, our visitors, will become a part of the Newark Museum family as well. There are many ways to become a member of the Newark Museum and many benefits to membership. Please consult www.newarkmuseum.org for more information about becoming a member and contributor to the Newark Museum. This podcast is a presentation of the Newark Museum. 100 years, always new. The Newark Museum's Centennial Celebration is sponsored by Prudential. Our Unbounded exhibition is also supported by J.P. Morgan Chase.